In this video, we're going to learn how to return a string from a function using C. There's actually multiple ways that we can return a string from a function in C, depending on where and how the string is stored in memory. So ultimately strings in C are stored as sequences of characters in memory, where the last character in the string is the special null terminator character that signifies the end of the string. So if a function is going to return a string, one way it can do it is by returning a pointer to the string in memory. So for example, we could have car star method one. And this function here is going to return a pointer to a character, a pointer to the first character in the string. In other words, the memory address of the first character in the string. We'll copy this and provide an implementation of the function down here. And one thing we could do is return a pointer to a string literal. So for example, if we had here return string, what this will do is return a pointer to the first character in this string here. Now this type of string here is what's called a string literal. Where exactly in memory string literals are stored is not defined as part of the C language standard, but we do know that we can't modify them. So we can't actually modify this string that's going to be returned by this function by returning the memory address of where the string is stored in memory. So in our main function, we could call this function. We could have here car star str1 is equal to method one. And here the pointer to a car variable str1 is going to store the memory address of that string that's returned from method one. Now we can print out that string. So we could have here printf str1 colon percent s backslash n, and we'll output the string here. If we save, compile, and run a program, we get that str1 is string. But we can't actually modify the string. So if here I had str1 at the index zero is equal to the character a, and then we save, compile, and run a program, it's going to compile okay, but the program is going to crash because we're trying to modify a string literal and we can't do that. This string literal here cannot be modified. That's just a rule in C. So this technique would only be useful for returning strings defined at compile time that we also don't want to modify during program execution. We could say that an immutable string is being returned from the function. If we are going to use this technique, we should change the return type here to const car pointer. What this effectively means is that we have a pointer to a string where the string itself cannot be altered. We have a pointer to an immutable string. We could change it up here as well to const car pointer. And because the return type of the function has been changed to const car pointer, we'll now get a warning if we try to assign the return value to this car pointer str1. So if we save, compile, and run the program, we now get a warning here. The warning here says initializing car pointer with an expression of type const car pointer discards qualifiers. So we're at least being warned that we could be doing something wrong here. And that's because const car pointer, the return value of the function is effectively a pointer to a string that cannot be modified. Whereas a car pointer is effectively a pointer to a string that can be modified. So this warning would let us know that we should use const car pointer here as the variable type. Now, if we did this and then tried to modify the string, we'll now get a full blown error. So if we save this, try to compile and run our program, now we get a compiler error. And that's because we're trying to modify something that can't be modified. So this const car pointer return type is going to help to enforce that we shouldn't actually modify the string that this function returns a pointer to. So if we are going to return a string literal from a function like this, we should use const car pointer as the function return type to help ensure that we don't later try to modify this string. Another place that strings are stored is on the stack. So for example, we could try to make another function. Up here we'll have car pointer method two. And then we'll copy this and down here, we'll try a different approach. Here we'll have a local car array called try and we'll store into this car array the string try so this will actually result in a car array of length four and it will be set to the characters t r y and then the special null terminator character 
we could actually return a pointer to this car array. So here if we have return try, we would say that the car array try will decay to a pointer. It will turn into a car pointer. So now we're going to return a pointer to the first character in this string, the first character in this car array. We could try to use this function in main. So in main, we could have here car star str2 is equal to method2. And then here, we could try to output str2. So we'll have printf str2 colon percent s backslash n and str2. But this is not going to work. If we save, compile, and try to run our program, we'll get this garbage here in our output instead of the string try. And what's going on here is the string try is stored in the car array try that is local to the method2 function. So we actually get a warning about this here. It says address of stack memory associated with the local variable try returned. And the reason we're getting a warning is that the car array try is going to cease to exist as soon as the function returns. So then when our main function tries to use the pointer that's returned by this function, that's the memory address of a car array that no longer exists. And so we get garbage output. It is possible to effectively return a character array by using memory on the stack if we create that character array in the calling function. So for example, if in main we had a character array, car ret256, here we have a character array that can store 256 characters. We could make another method. This method will actually have a void return type. Because the function is not going to return anything in the typical way, what we're going to do is effectively return a string by using a pointer to a car as a parameter. So we'll have method three and then car star s. So here we effectively have a memory address of a string as an argument to the function. We can pass to this function the memory address of the car array in main. This function can then modify that car array and insert a string into that car array. That will effectively return a string from this function. The string will still exist when the function returns because the car array is actually in main, the calling function. To help us set this string, let's actually include the string.h library. So we can use the string copy function. And then down here in main, we'll call method three. And we're gonna pass method three, ret. Again, this car array, ret, is going to decay to a pointer. We're going to pass the memory address of the first character in this character array to the function. Then down here, we'll define method three. We'll have void method three, car star s. So now, s is going to store the memory address of that car array in main. We could use the string copy function, strcpy, from the string.h library to copy a string into that car array by using the pointer s. So we could have strcpy s. The first argument is the destination, the place in memory to copy the string. Then we could have our string here. We'll say method three string. And that will do it. That will copy this string into that car array in main. And we could say this is a technique to return a string from a function. Let's actually verify this work though. In main, let's output the string. We'll have printf ret colon percent s backslash n and we'll output ret. We can save, compile, and run the program. And we can see the car array ret does contain the string method three string. So this technique does work. And this technique uses what's called pass by reference or pass by pointer. When using this technique, it's very important that the car array in the calling function is large enough to store the string that's copied into it. To ensure this, we could do something like set a maximum length for the string that the function would return, so that as long as the car array was large enough, it would be okay to store the string. We could also do something like pass another argument to the function for the length of the car array in the calling function, and the function could then make sure not to copy a string into the car array that would exceed this length. I should also note that the car array that's passed to a function like this doesn't need to be on the stack either. It could be in dynamically allocated memory on the heap. Another method we could use is dynamic memory allocation. So up here, we could include the stdlib.h library, which allows us to use the functions malloc and free 
to work with dynamically allocated memory. We can then have a function here, car star method four. This function is going to return a pointer to a car, a pointer to a string. We're going to use the malloc function to allocate space for a block of memory on the heap. We're going to return a pointer to that space on the heap. We can then store a string in that space. Now, unlike a local car array on the stack, as in method two, memory that's been allocated on the heap is going to persist even after the function returns. It's going to persist until we free the memory using the free function. So we'll copy this. And then down here, we'll define the function. And the first thing we'll do in the function is declare a car pointer variable called string. Next, we'll use malloc to dynamically allocate space on the heap. So we'll have malloc and we'll pass in eight. So the argument to malloc specifies the number of car sized units to allocate space for, where a car typically takes up one byte on most systems and most compilers. So malloc is going to allocate space for eight characters. It's going to return a memory address for that block of memory. So string is going to store the memory address of the first car in that block of memory that's been allocated by malloc, where that block of memory is eight characters in size. We can then copy a string into this block of memory with string copy, and then string as the destination, and we'll copy in the string dynamic. Finally, we can return this pointer. We can return this memory address with return string. Now in main, we could try out our function. So up here we'll have car star dynamic is equal to method four. And we'll store the pointer to a character that's returned by method four into this pointer to a character variable dynamic. And then we'll print out the string that's located there with printf dynamic colon percent s backslash n dynamic. And if we save compile and run the program, we'll see that we do have the string dynamic. So it is working. Now with dynamically allocated memory, it's very important that we free the memory once we're done working with it. Otherwise we'll have what's called a memory leak where we have memory that's allocated but not actually being used. So here we'll have free dynamic to free this memory. We can save compile and run the program and we'll get the same output as before. But this time we're freeing the dynamically allocated memory and preventing a memory leak. The fact that we really need to make sure to free the memory could be considered a drawback of this technique. So these are some techniques we can use to return a string from a function. Technically speaking, there are other techniques we could use. We could have a global car array and we could write the string we want to return from the function to that car array. Using a global variable like this would very often be a poor programming practice though, as it introduces global state, which often makes our code harder to understand and debug and can make it much more difficult to maintain. We could use a static local car array inside a function. Unlike a regular local car array, a static local car array would continue to exist even after the function returns. The problem is the car array will now exist in memory and take up space, even if we're not using it anymore. Using a global car array also has the same drawback, where memory is going to be set aside for the car array, whether we're using it or not. So even though these are options that will technically work, I don't advise using either one of them. So this is how we can return a string from a function in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.